It's your girl, Jazzy K with Super Tight TV. We want to thank everyone that's been watching. Hey, if you do us a favor and hit that subscribe button, also press the notification bell so you can be notified every time we drop a new video. You're not tuned in to something super tight. Puffing something sticky, nigga, I roll through the light Need to hear something real just to get me through the night I'm looking for them jackets cause I know they looking shy Know I'ma get some game tuned in with super tight, yeah I get the low love from Big Bobo From the front seat, not no photos Already, baby, what it do? It's your big dog, Bobo Luciano I want to thank everybody again for tuning in to Super Tight TV We back, up your back, going smack, smack, smack Like we always do it feel good to me. I hope it feel good to you. Say, I got my sexy ass, gorgeous, beautiful wife. It's your girl, Jazzy K. In the building. Say, man, today we have another super tight guest. This is what we call an expedited interview. Oh, yeah. man. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Skip the line type of interview. Yeah, VIP. When you got one of the uh, the big guys, the big dogs in Fort Worth, Texas. You know, I watched a movie a long time ago called King of New York. Man said, if a dime bag is sold in the port, I want in. I want my cut. This is one of them guys right here, man. If if, if it's a music being played in Funky Town or Tarrant, Tarrant County, let's just say that, most likely this guy has something to do with it. He got his fingerprints all over it. Formerly of the uh, No One Nothing Beats podcast nothing beats experience nothing beats experience podcast we're gonna flip that this this next week right yeah we're gonna flip that to something bigger and better for 2023 we're gonna call it the smooth vega podcast and i got my dog smooth vega in the house hey. yeah yeah hey, baby, baby, baby. I like that I, you like that man i've been trying to work on it man, man you get me fired up man i feel like just running out the tunnel and scoring seven right off the top <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm you gonna run the kick out there? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what yeah. I love to hear. I want that energy right now. That Cowboys versus 49ers energy. Oh, oh. Speaking of, speaking of, speaking of, my wife is is, is trying to uh, remind me. Yes, because we have a uh, <laughs> you know we got protocol. Mm -hmm. You've seen the protocol, oh, some yeah, of it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So I need you to. Rub that blue star for that cowboy energy. Oh, yes. You know what I'm talking about? This is going to make yeah. this a positive interview. Yeah. This is going to make all the positive energy in the world come to Dallas and the Dallas Cowboys. Okay? Mm -hmm. Well, we're not going to say Dallas. We're going to say Dallas and Funky Town Fort Worth. All right? DFW. Yeah, DFW, because we all won. You know what I'm talking about? This is the Metroplex. Oh, y'all still Funky Town or y'all murder work? Uh, I've always liked the word the funk. I, I like you know, too, I, right? I just I shortened it, man. Funky town yeah. sounds a little old school to me, man. The funk is what it is. It did. Man. It did turn to the funk, funk and I, I like that name too, bro. The funk. We gonna call it the funk. Ain't no oh. way we can fake the funk when we're from it, man. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I like, yeah, I like you. <laughs> I like it. So, you know, uh, I, I think you told me you uh, you either have are you married? Yeah, so I've been married now for a very long time. I'm about to say, okay. get it right. Get it right. <laughs> so you know, you know how it is when women are involved. Yeah, for sure. You better open the door for them. You better be real respectful and gentleman-like. Mm -hmm. So I always let my wife start this thing off, man, because it's ladies first in my life. Handley, baby. All right, Mr. Vega. So we know that you rep. <laughs> Mr. Vega. We, re we know you rep the funk. But where are you originally from? Were you born and raised there? Yeah, I've mm -hmm. born and raised my whole entire life in Fort Worth. Uh, grew up in North Fort Worth uh, in a neighborhood called Diamond Hill, which I like to say is the capital of Fort Worth. Right? Oh, <laughs> you sound like me with that. Claim it. You know so what, what high school did you go to? I actually went to Diamond Hill High School. So yeah. it's my whole life has been in Fort Worth. I, I don't think I've ever even really considered living anywhere else. Fort Worth is home, for sure. That part. For sure. So coming up, take us through, because you told me on the phone that, you know, Fort Worth is your home and it's, it's nothing else, but it has never been anywhere else never. but your home. Tell our viewers, because you know, everybody experiences different things in their life, you know what I mean? Through your eyes, through your family's eyes, take them through Fort Worth. So I think I have an interesting story. You know, I 
I don't think that I registered until I was older, kind of what went on with the way that I view it now. But so first generation Mexican-American. Right. Uh, My grandparents, you know, moved over here from originally they moved from Mexico to uh, Bakersfield, California, relocated to Fort Worth, which is where my mom and my dad met. Mm -hmm. Um, My uncles had a a regional band. They Mm. were like a, a, a Spanish, all Spanish band. And so my my dad was a roadie for the band and my mom was a sister of the band so that's how they met they met at a show which ironically years later that's how i eventually met oh, my yeah. wife oh yeah you know uh now history, what was the name of the band it was los rebeldes Rimicos, which translates to the arithmetic rebels right. now now yeah. now what part of mexico are they from so my mother was from coahuila my father was from michoacan uh Ooh. so yeah that that's a lot of history down there but yeah. Uh, whenever my mother and I, I just told this story recently, so I have a festival that I launched in 2021. You know, obviously I'm a promoter as well, and my festival this year is going to be the third year. I named the festival Central Popular, Centro Popular, which you know translates to Popular Central, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mother actually owned a record shop, an independent record shop from 1984, 85, all the way up to about 96, 97. I was born in 85. So I was, you know, I was raised in this independent business that my mother owned that sold, uh, regional, uh, Mexican music. And also rent, and she would rent out, you know, American movie titles and Mexican movie titles. So like a blockbuster. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I, I always tell the story because I say, you know, I used to always say the hustle came from my father, right? And I got my heart's mother, my, my mom's heart is what I would say. But now that I got older, I realized like, hold up, my mother was the independent yeah. business owner. Yeah, your mama got that hustle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was the independent yeah. business owner. Yes. And, you know, being, she was still, she was actually a Mexican immigrant and, you know, her having a successful independent business from 1985 all the way to 96, 97, like mm-hmm. that, that, that's where I got everything. Hustle. Mm. I, I learned how to be an entrepreneur. I read it. You know, and I, I was in, the music was embedded in me. And mm. I didn't even realize it until when I started doing the festival because I named the festival after her shop. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that's, that's how I did an honor. Because my mother passed away in 2009. So I think it was so important mm. for me. Sorry for you there, brother. It was so important for me to honor her, but in a unique way. And I didn't, and nothing's ever going to be good enough mm-hmm. for your, for, to honor no. your mother, you know? No, no, but, no, no, no. But at least you're doing something. That's you know a dang I mean? good start. That's a, that's yeah. a beautiful start, man. Mm-hmm. And you say this is the third year? This is going to be the third year this year, correct? I did last year, 3 Six Mafia headlined it. I brought Camilla out of whatever hole he was in, and I got oh, him yeah. to perform. You know what I mean? Wow, wow. That's, that's big. Yeah, it was cool, man. It was really cool to have Is that cool. toward the uh, fourth quarter of the year? Uh, it's typically the third quarter. It may be the fourth quarter this year. Like, you know, I don't really necessarily feel like I wanted to do it every year. You know, last year I did it on her actual birthday. You know, last year I did it on her birthday, but I don't want to feel the pressure to like deliver it on the same date every year or the same weekend every year. Now, okay. yeah. I just want to do it when it feels right because, really you know, at the end of the day, you know, it, 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 this has to feel good. You exactly. know, exactly. I feel you on there. Yeah. You got to put your heart into it. Yeah. And, you know, that's the come natural. But I say that. So, my, my, forward through my lens is very much has always been music based okay i didn't grow up wanting to be a ball player i didn't want to grow up you know being anything other than a musician or in the music industry and i never really understood where that love and that passion came from until i realized this is this is my really my i mean damn you grew up in a music shop yeah right? i grew up in a music <laughs> shop you know i yeah. saw, I saw yeah. a lot of stuff and i was exposed to all genres of music you know my older brother who's six years older than me he put me on the hip-hop yeah. The very first rap group I was ever exposed to was the Ghetto Boys. Mm. You know, so that's a good start. That's yeah. a hell of a good start. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Scarface is one of the greatest of all time. Mm. You know? So is Willie D. Yeah. Oh, Don't forget yeah. about my dog yeah. Willie yeah. D, man. I, I met Willie actually at a at a Nipsey Hustle concert that I put on in Houston. So I was able to establish a you know relationship with them guys. But you know, like I said, you know, just in general. You know, my brother put me on to West Coast hip hop, you know, yeah. early on. So I was a big fan of like Dre, Snoop, mm-hmm. Easy E, uh, eventually Tupac, Bone Thugs and Harmony, mm-hmm. through proxy of, yes. of, you know what I'm saying? Who's of your easy. favorite rapper? All time. Uh, Tupac's probably going to be my favorite yeah, rapper of all go. time for me. Uh, but I mean, it's very subjective because you might catch me one day listening to Tupac the next day. Scarface is always going to be up there for me. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Incredible. Yeah, so it's just, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of Eminem as well. So, you know, there's a lot of guys that I'm just a fan of in general, but I, those guys have a really close place to my heart because of where I was at in my life. And that's how I was exposed to hip-hop in general. You know, my brother being older, so I'm like, this is all I've known. Yeah, yeah, me too. That's you know, all I wanted to grow up doing. So, yeah, I mean, forward for me was 
was that, you know, and I think as I, you know, started developing my own identity and as I got older, you know, I saw a lot of different things. You know, I grew up in a neighborhood that, you know, I probably missed the the height of the the nineties, you know, gangster era. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Where it was getting real ugly out here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I think at that time, you know, it had just started kind of dying down because there was a period of time where people were getting jacked for starter jackets and getting oh, yes. getting yeah. killed for beepers and shit like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're, you know, we're gonna jack you for your chains and yeah, yeah. roll up on you and you know shoot you for your Dayton's, you know, the rims or whatever. No side is like that. Yeah, it was bad. I mean, it was bad. The generation right before me, when I got there, you know, it, I don't think it was as bad. You know, I remember, you know, the mid nineties, I was able to walk, you know, through my neighborhood, you know, at 10 at night and go to the convenience store and not worry about what color I was wearing. Okay. Mm-hmm. I experienced a little bit of that, you know, whenever I was in sixth and seventh grade, but it wasn't, you know, I wasn't really wrapped up in that. Like I had a lot of friends that were jammed up in the street yeah. stuff. I'd never really, my, like, I don't know if you know this, I've, I've never drank my whole life. Okay. I don't smoke. Uh, my addiction has always been productivity and music. So I read it. I read it. And I, you know, people always ask me, "Do you do that?" Just to say you don't do that, I'm like, "No, I, I didn't invest money into a lot of that stuff because I saw what it did to a lot of my friends, mm. and I never wanted to create a spending habit on anything other than that wasn't productive for really? what I was trying to accomplish." That's good. That's a good way to view life. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, so everybody knows and hears about, of course, the Bloods and the Crips. Yeah. In, in Funky Town. Are you privy to information about Hispanic games in, in Funky Town? Yeah, I mean, of course, I knew about it. I mean, I had friends that were in it, you know okay, what I mean? Okay. And not only did I have friends that were in it, I had friends of, you know, older brothers and yes. you know, older sub- siblings that were part of it. It just didn't, it never intrigued me. Like, it, I never really cared for it. You know, I yeah. think around that time, you know, Menace to Society had came out, a Blood and Blood, Blood and Blood Out mm. came out, mm-hmm. and all these like movies were coming out that were, you know, talking about the street life stuff and. Maybe the local. Yeah, yeah. man. I just, I don't know. It just didn't really. I, I'm, I'm obviously I know about it, yep. and you know, I've, I've heard the stories. <clears throat> but Excuse me. I just never really cared to like talk about it or glorify it for me because it was like it was a way of living for a lot of people that, yeah. you know, they were just a product of their environment. Exactly. And a lot of those guys were misunderstood. But for me, it it wasn't what I wanted for myself, you know, and I never got wrapped up in it, you know, never got wrapped up in it. But I'm, I'm aware of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when did you decide, were you in high school, that you decided to say, okay, I've got this music background. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to push full Wait, in school, were you ever in the band or anything? No, I, I tried to learn the violin in like third or fourth grade. And then that was about the extent of it. I was like not musically inclined. I wasn't naturally like put a piano in front of me and I was, yeah, you know, like I just didn't, I wasn't that. But to answer the question, when it when the, the bug hit me, yeah, I, I never associated it with my mom's video store, my uncle's. Mm. I never like thought of it that way. It okay. never registered that way. I think that's naturally how it's wired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was in set. Well, rewind. Fifth grade. So I'm ten years old. 1995. I'm ten years old, and uh, I'm about to be eleven years old. And I learned too short. I'm a player. That's the first word for word Ooh. lyrics that I've ever learned. Mm-hmm. See, I made up my mind when I was seventeen. Yeah. I ain't getting no wife for no wedding. I'll be a player for life. Yeah. So where's my wife? Probably at the rehab, stuff in the pipe. Yeah. She must be smoking, and I'm not joking. Too short, baby. Coming, coming straight, straight from yeah. Oakland. Yeah. 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 So, so, so that I learned that song in and out. So you know, this is the first time that you know I had a rapper really like rap in a way that I felt I could emulate. Yeah. And up, you know, I. I've, Give all the credit in the world to Too Short. He's like really the first swagger rapper in my opinion. Man. Like just super swagged yeah, out. Yeah. Uh, just had charisma. You know, yes, he, he wasn't did. the most complex lyrically. No, but no, he no, didn't no. need to be though. He was just right. cool. He was just too short. <laughs> he was smooth. <laughs> man. Yes, he was. Bro. He was smooth, and I, that that was the origins of me wanting to rap. Right, mm-hmm. because you know when, like I told you, my brother put me on to Ghetto Boys. Right, but even after Ghetto Boys, you know. MC Hammer, Vanilla Ice, that little era that came in. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I'm young, so I like that, you know? And then there was a song that hit the radio called I'm a Dope Fiend on 100.3 channels. I'm a Dope Fiend. (laughs) You don't know how many times I've told that to people, but nobody knows that record. Oh, yeah. Just bought it from Chico. (laughs) (laughs) The neighborhood thug. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> you talking about some hip hop heads right here, baby. That, that was a 100.3 jams back yeah. in the day. Yes. And I remember hearing that on the radio and I was hooked. But it wasn't until Brenda's Got a Baby by Tupac. Did that change a lot of lives? Brenda's Got a Baby. That yes. song was the first song that I, I loved. And that's from that point forward, I was a Tupac fan. But never mind that, fifth grade, I learned too short. I'm a player. Mm -hmm. And then... He's in the fifth grade. <laughs> yeah, I was in fifth grade. I was Damn. rapping. This. Yeah, I mean, I just thought about that when you said that. Yeah, fifth grade. Little kid rapping. I'm a player. Yeah, I, I was like, I was reciting the lyrics in class, and I remember, you know, feeling like I could rap because you know, Too Short was, you know, mm -hmm. he was there. You know, he was dumb down enough for, you know, us yes, to yes. recite the lyrics. So. Yeah. Uh, and, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, but it was just, it was easy to digest. Easy. Yeah. So when I go into middle school, you know, uh, I think my first immediate thing that I wanted to do was to be a youth counselor. And my mom wanted me to, like, my mom would be like, you'd be a good parole officer because I had a leadership quality to myself. Mm -hmm. And I think I always wanted to be a mentor, but I started getting in a lot of trouble, seventh, eighth grade. And then the summer of seventh going into eighth grade, no Limit Records had this wave that just took off. Yeah, oh, yeah. So and Master P became the next too short for me. Okay. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, easy, like, easy rhymes to recite. Yeah, easy yeah. rhymes to recite. Just, you know, I learned it. And from the summer of seventh going into eighth grade, it was like, uh, I would, man, I wrote down every No Limit Records song that I had access to. Mm. You know, everything from Cain and Abel, yeah. Set the Shocker, See Murder, Skull, yeah. Duggery, Mac, Big Ed, you name it. Yeah. I was all over that. And yeah, man, Sir they Ron. was dropping them, dropping them. Oh, man, they were, they, yeah. I bought every one every Tuesday at Best Buy, every color. You know, they had the, 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 the disc, the, yeah. the color. The pin, it, pin and Pixel on yeah. the cover. Oh, man, Pin and, <laughs> they, pin and Pixel killed the game, man. Man, did they not? And those digi packs that they had were yes. real creative, man, because like, they popped on the on the on the retail shelves, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I I end up going back to school and I tell the story often because it was a security guard at my middle school, Miss Rayvon Walker. Hi, Miss Walker. I don't know if you're watching. Miss um, Walker actually saw that I was getting in a lot of trouble. She didn't know me. It was her first year at my school. And my one of my classmates, who was a good friend of mine at the time, saw that I came back to school from the summer with 40 songs written which were really no limit records rewritten yeah. and i would just like swap out masterpiece name and insert my name <laughs> you know and yeah. i remember because my real name is lorenzo i remember one of the songs like, lorenzo went to benzo so i heard that rhyme and i was like mm -hmm. oh look you know i would write mm -hmm. the song so my friend takes one of the songs takes off with it and then gives it to one of the teachers it lands in miss walker's hands and miss walker saw that i rap happened to have a friend or she happened to have a cousin that owned a recording studio on Avenue H on the east side of Fort Worth, J.J. Snow, right next to Polytech. And she goes to my assistant principal without notifying me and says, hey, if I could keep this tr this kid out of trouble for six weeks, and, you know, he gets in line, will you allow me to take him to the recording studio so he can record the song? And they agreed. And so that's how it started. That's where it all began. Oh, wow. Now, what <laughs> impact did that have on you, Miss Walker, this teacher? <laughs> you know, yes. it's funny because I haven't seen Miss Walker in over 20 years, but I ran into her son. Uh, ironically, I was speaking at Diamond Hill's graduation the year of the pandemic. And, you know, they didn't have a normal graduation because of everything that was going on. Mm -hmm. It was like outside social distancing. And then I have, you know, I remember seeing him, or it might have been before that, but he came up to me and he's like, hey, you don't know me, dude. I was like, no. He's like, I know all about you. I was like, what's... Oh, he actually was at the rail club right here on, on, on you know, on the west side. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm Ray Vaughn Walker. So I was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> dude, you know, I answered her, but she changed my life. You know, oh, absolutely yeah. changed my life. And she changed my life in a way that it wasn't so much what she, you know, what, how she... Did. It's basically the way I say it is, I didn't know how possible it was. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't register to know that if I just got in the recording studio, like I could be in a recording studio. I didn't know that was a possibility. Yeah, yeah. I'm 13 years old. I'm, you know, an eighth grade. Mm -hmm. My friends weren't thinking about rapping. They weren't, they were, they yeah. weren't thinking about any of the things I was thinking about. And the moment I walked in the studio, I was like, I thought I was signed already. So I was like, this is happening. <laughs> this is life. Yeah. yeah but no, it, it, it impacted me to the degree where I'm like, as soon as I walked in there, there's nothing else that I'm... This is, I felt it was a sign, and this is what I'm going to do the rest of my life. And it stopped you from being in trouble? Up to a certain extent, yes. But, I mean, I was never really in trouble to the degree of where I was fighting or I was, you know, in gangs. I was just... I just talked back a lot. Mischievous, yeah. 
Yeah, I just I, strong minded. Well, you know, I think at the time I was probably crying for my parents' attention more than I let on. You oh, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it, it, it put me, it gave me something to work towards and work for. And so I, I from that point forward, my life was that. Mm. So I know that's a long answer, but that is exactly how it happened. And yeah, Miss Walker, she, you know, absolutely, you know, played a huge part in that. And I don't talk about that enough, but yeah, how long did you rap know. for? I rap from the time that I was, you know, and it's funny because so I meet JJ in at 13, I didn't revisit JJ until I was 15. This whole entire time, I'm telling all my friends, I'm going to rap, I'm going to rap, yeah. I'm going to rap. And I scrapped up some dollars, and I eventually recorded a song. And my first song I ever recorded was on December the 2nd of the year 2020. No, 20, 2000, my bad, 2000. And it's funny because I still remember the first time I ever went to the studio was on October 23rd, 1998. Mm. So October twenty third, October yeah, these are dates that are embedded like they're yeah. fucking embedded in my brain. Yeah. So October twenty third, nineteen ninety eight, first time going to the studio, first time I record a song, December second, twenty two thousand. I keep on saying two thousand. So it was the year two thousand. I rapped all the way up to my last release, which was in twenty eighteen. I released oh, wow. the album, but I still record from time to time. So if I have the opportunity to go in and do a record with somebody and have fun with it, yeah. Uh, I'll do it. You know what I mean? Like I did a, I did a record probably during the pandemic with MC8 and that was someone that I just like admired, you know, Straight Up oh, Menace. come on. Now. Straight Up Menace is one of my favorite songs of all time. I was listening to it right now in the other room. Oh yeah. Uh, so, you know, if you ever, if you call me tomorrow and you're like, hey, you know, too short to get on your record. You jumping back yeah, in the I'm like, yo, I'm gonna go back in the room. Yo, like, can we can we run back that? Uh, I'm gonna play in 2023. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remix. That's a bucket list. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Look, look at this shit. I mean, I'm always gonna have a passion yeah. for it. And honestly, go, you know, coming into the industry with no mentors, no teachers, nobody to show me the way or be a guideline, and honestly, probably being very underestimated because I wasn't naturally skilled. And you know, guys know what I mean. Like, there's some guys that you that mm-hmm. you've met. I'm sure that. You don't need to teach them anything. They uh-huh. just got it. Like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. you're God given. Naturally. Them. And I wasn't one of those guys. I was one of those guys that had to learn the craft. And by the time I really learned how to rap, how to make music, how to structure music, how to compose rhymes, how to really know how to deliver, record all that stuff, at that point, I already had a foot out because I started doing promotions and yeah. I started making money elsewhere. And I also spent so much time branding myself early on in the in the internet era that I feel that I was exposed to a lot of people that heard me and probably did not like what I did musically because I was premature. They heard the premature version of me. So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with that. You know, like, yeah. uh, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so since we're on rap, you and I spoke. And I know you love full work. Oh, man, I love full work. Let's go to that topic we talked about. Yeah, shoot. You know, because, you know, we have, I'm not from Fort Worth. I'm from Oak Cliff, you know, mm. my way to South Dallas. The so, capital of Dallas. Oh, huh, <laughs> right. That part. Sing, that part. Singing Hills, the capital of Oak Cliff. You know what I'm talking about? Ah. That's right. What? Wow. Oak Cliff, America. Oak, Oak Cliff, America. Oak Cliff is the capital. Yeah, but there has to Oak be a Cliff capital. America. <laughs> Oak Cliff, America. It's like it's Austin. Well, you know, Washington, D.C. is the capital of the United States, but every state has a capital. And we're going to consider Oak Cliff like a state, which is the capital of Dallas. And Singing Hills <laughs> is the capital of Oak Cliff. I risk my case. Well, anyway, since we're talking about rapping, and, you know, we talked about me and what I've noticed to come out of Fort Worth, you know, as far as my top three lyrics, yeah, lyricist. Okay, we're not talking. You no know, popularity has probably where I'm going with it. Mm. It can't be how far they've gone. Mm. You know what I mean? You want to speak on that? Yeah, I mean, look, I saw the the interview that you had with uh, Supreme. I don't think I watched the whole interview in its entirety, but I did watch whenever we talked. Y'all guys talked about mm-hmm. the top ever. You know, he mentioned his his. His top four, I believe. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, Fort Worth had a real good music scene. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Y'all had some real dope rappers. Oh, over, yeah. You know, from the 90s. And, you know, uh, who do you think the dopest to come out of Fort Worth there? Mm. Ever. I know I know who I got. I, I got my top three. Mm. Top four. <laughs> so. Ever. Ever, ever. Six Deuce ever. is a cold ever. guy. That motherfucker's in there. Yeah, he's a cold guy. That's him. Genocide. So, Nobody ever talk about genocide yeah, no more. He's man. a cold guy. What's up, Eldie? 
Yeah. Hell dog, that's my guy. Mm-hmm. Solo Lucci is a bad man. You know, Solo so, Lucci. I know who he is. He's a bad man. I'm like, that's not one of mine. He's a bad guy though. He's a bad I I I really have to check him out. Yeah, he he's one of the so you already checked him out. You just didn't know it. A lot of that future stuff you hear, a yeah. lot of that um it's a it, lot of people. He's a writer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um Twisted Black. Twisted Black's number one. To me. Go yeah, yo is in there. He's my number four. How you feel about his top four? I don't disagree his from okay. This is a two sided question, right? I don't disagree his position on it. Yeah. I understand why he said the four that he said. Uh, but I think part of the reason, and I don't think people understand it because I'm so big on perspective. Mm-hmm. Life is all about perspective. It's Absolutely. not about, you know, what's right or what's wrong because at the end of the day, it's all based on how you view it. Yes. My thoughts on Fort Worth as as a whole, and I'm very passionate about this, as I'm getting older, you know, I'm 37, <laughs> about to be 38 years old, right? Youngster. He says I'm young. I feel I'm old. You know, I got, I got those wisdom hairs popping out, you know, slowly and gradually. Uh, but, you know, the reason why I say that is because I want to hold you know, my city and, and our expectation levels to, to a certain standard. Mm-hmm. And I want to hold people accountable. And as we're getting to, you know, uh, you know, a day and age where everything's, you know, vanity is popularized, followers, you know, numbers, you know, views, like that's what, yes. that's how people base success today. Yeah, it's, the, it's not based on impact. You know, it's not based on accomplishments, the, accomplishments or skills. It's all based on, you know, likes really, and followers. Yeah. You know, so I feel in that sense, you know, when I look at the guys that typically you mentioned, which is Twisted Black, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, uh, Go Yayo, 6'2", uh, you know, Solo Lucci gets mentioned across the board pretty frequently. It's not that I want to take anything away from their accomplishments. You know, all credit where credit is due. These guys did great things. But mm-hmm. when I start talking about ca- accountability, I'm looking at it from the perspective, look, these guys did great, amazing things. There's no denying that. But for all their greatness, they also did some not so great things by getting wrapped up, jammed up. In, in a sense, some of these guys blew their chance. Yes. I interviewed Twisted Black on my podcast from jail, you know, and one of the things that he said on the way out of that interview was, you know, uh, I go, what what would you want these guys to learn from you? Yeah. And he basically states, like, I want them to learn from my mistakes, right? Because we're sitting here and we're, we're, I don't want to use the term glorifying, but we're celebrating the success of these guys. But yeah. the same way that we learn from what they did great, we have to learn from what they didn't do great. Exactly. Absolutely. Because I'm okay. looking at it like, you guys are great, but you guys could have been that much more greater. Because in my opinion, professionally, all of you guys were at the one yard line and y'all were about to score and y'all fucked up y'all's chance. Damn. You know what I'm saying? And it's a harsh reality when you say it that way, but it's the honest to God truth. And I want to be able to teach the next generation that, look, these guys were great and they could have been even greater. Yeah. But this is where they fell short at. Don't do the same thing. Don't follow Because that. if not, if we're only celebrating and making everybody believe that this is the, the right way, these are the greats, mm-hmm. they're going to follow and they're going to end up in the same goddamn exactly. position. You I know what I'm saying? And so that's all I'm saying because you look at someone like Yayo. Yayo is young enough to get out yep. and still have an impact. But the truth is when he gets out, whether it's in a year, two years or three years, I know that guy had potential to go to the moon. Yes. You know, he had, like he was the first um, product of the viral era, you know, in regards to like Fort Worth. And he set the wave off for all these young guys to, you know, follow his trend and his blueprint and his influence will never be denied for that generation. However, I look at that, I'm like, God damn, you could have been even greater. Yes. But look at where you're at right now. And even though when you, you do come out and there will be a point in time when he does come out, Right, he'll never be the same young guy that he once he, was. Well, he missed a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. oh, he missed a lot of money. He missed a lot of and, money. And missed a lot of time. But you'll never be that new artist again. You'll never recapture oh, yeah, the new yeah. artist energy. You could yeah. come back and still have a run. Yeah, yeah. But momentum is a motherfucker. Yes, it is. You got to yeah. regain momentum. And and you have yeah, a you, you have a window, man. You know what I'm saying? You and do. so we, I look at it from that perspective, and I go, you know what? There's there's so many determining factors in what makes, you know, and what's the criteria when we talk about the best or the greats or the people that have done it at a higher level. And, you know, there's no denying, you know, 6'2". Come yes. on, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he was with DLC. He was right. on, he was with Dre. Yeah. You know, even after that, he went on. He got signed to Timberland. He was part of Beat Club. He wrote the record for Pussycat Dolls, that Wait a Minute record. Like, you know, he did a lot of great things. Shout out to my brother, Six Deuce. Deuce is one of the dopest to ever do it, no doubt. You know, I, I mean, could have it gone further, I'm sure. And I'm sure yeah. he could tell that story better than I can. And I don't, you know, with all due respect to Deuce, like, I'll give him that. But, 
you know, we I think we can all agree there's a lot more to be desired with Deuce. You know what I'm saying? He, man, come on, man. Yeah, like, yeah. He was there. He, he was, was there. More than once. He was on the one-yard line. <laughs> yeah. Seattle Seahawks versus Tom Brady. Facts. You remember that? Yes. In the Super Bowl. They should have, they, 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 they passed the ball when they should have ran. Mm. I mean, Twisted Black, you know, Twisted Black's another guy, you know, uh, obviously born in Detroit, came, comes over. That's my next thing I was going to ask you. I didn't mean to cut you off, but since, since you brought it up, since we've had mm-hmm. that show with Supreme, someone bought it. Well, you know, he ain't even from Fort Worth. I was like, ugh, but that, he sure repped y'all hard. No, What's I your mean, thoughts on that? So I'll That's say this. Boy. You know what? I'm going to say this. Like, I, I had the opportunity to talk to him. He identifies Fort Worth as home. So let's start mm-hmm. there. There you go. You know, I mean, he may have been born in Detroit. Uh, and, you know, though he has roots in Detroit, when you hear him rapping, and trust me, I listen to his music. For me, mm-hmm. from a skill perspective, yes, he's the best. Yes, you know, like just lyrically, mm-hmm. his double rhymes, his triple rhymes, how witty he is, his wordplay, it's very mm-hmm. underrated. You know, yes. like if, it wasn't yeah. underrated. He was there. You like know, I'm okay, saying, okay, okay, everybody me, rated him. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, okay, let me, let me rephrase that. At the that. fool with it. You know, like yeah. <laughs> you know, like from a, okay, let me rephrase that from a technicality mm-hmm. standpoint. Yes. He he wasn't just a Fort Worth rapper. He wasn't just a Texas rapper. He he could go. He was technically sound. He was he could go. He yes. could go. And I even I remember I asked him about the record with him and Face, and he said, "Man, on the interview I asked him. He said, "Man, Face outclassed me on there." I actually think Black got the better of him on there. Mm. And this is what Black Black being raw with it, like yes, you know, yes. like he was just in there just snapping, you know. But even in that song. You know, all the way to Barry, back to Miller with it. You know, mm-hmm. South Side of the Fort, you know, the funk. He mentions Fort Worth and he raps it with pride, without a doubt. That's real. Yeah. I identify him as a Fort Worth artist. No different than Camilla Nair being born in Washington but representing Houston. You know, already. You know, like, or or even UGK, Port Arthur, you know, mm-hmm, they're, mm-hmm. they're notorious yeah. for Houston, you know, so. Yes. Good answer. You know? Good answer. That's going to make a good yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> because people, you know, people say that. Mm-hmm. You got people that are not in the industry. Well, you ain't even from Fort Worth. I, I mean, I always look at how long somebody been living somewhere. If yes. I was born in Detroit and moved at one, I don't yes. remember Detroit. Well, you know, <laughs> the, the analogy I give a lot of times mm-hmm. with, you know, with Fort Worth hip hop and Fort Worth rap, and I mean this with all due respect to the OGs and the legends that have, you know, paved the way is like, look, you hear the stories, right? Yep. Of, you know, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Earl Manigo and the story of Earl Manigo, uh, which is like the fame. The, he's like the biggest, most, and you guys Google it after you're done with this interview. He, Earl Manigo is known to be the best street player that never made the league, right? He was the guy. Oh, that, the, yeah, I've heard of him. He's like the basketball. He's like an yes, urban yes. myth. Like, yes, you know, yes, yes, he, yes. Earl the goat Manigo. Yes. So I always go. The one to go out there and get that quarter off the thing, wasn't it? Yeah, like, you know, this guy was the guy that everybody spoke about. Like, you know, he's an urban legend, the greatest ball player that never made the league. He would have been bigger than Jordan, right? He's yes. this big, larger-than-life myth. So, but he never made it because you know his his life got derailed because of drugs or whatever mm-hmm. the case may yeah. be. Sometimes I ask when we talk about Fort Worth, are they really the goats or are they really are they really Earl Manigo? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And let that elevator, you know, let that, that, that let, okay. you know, let that sink in because I was so close to reaching out to the local publications and going, let me write a story about Fort Worth hip hop because I feel as great as we are, we could have been great and we fell short more times than not. I understand the idea of celebrating skill and celebrating the talent that we've had, but we still have to hold these people accountable there you go. and say, you could be greater. And the next guys That's that are true. watching, these guys go, look, they were great, but be greater. And this is how you get greater. Because learn from their mistakes. Learn yeah. from their mistakes. And I'm telling you now, from at least the conversation I had with Black, he would tell you himself that. That's a beautiful thing. What's up, Black? That's my guy right there, man. So um, when did you decide to say, you know what? I can be a concert promoter. <laughs> My story is really cool, man. I, I think the story that I have in terms of concert promotion was simple. You know, like, of course, I told the story about how, you know, I got on social media pretty early on. I started doing social media marketing before it was really called social media marketing. Mm-hmm. And I just looked at, you know, the landscape of, you know, the local scene. I wasn't tapped in and I wasn't like, I didn't know everybody like everybody knew. You know what I'm saying? So I had very, you know, I didn't have as many references. Yeah. And so I wasn't part of the, the the circuit. I didn't know anything about how to get on shows. I didn't know any of that stuff. Yeah. So 
they would have like a local war show here that the the newspaper would put on and I started having a little bit of success and that gave me a little bit of no- notoriety because I had won an award on there. And, I, you know, I started getting booked, but it was just, I just was getting rejected, put it to you like that. I wasn't getting looks. I wasn't getting promoted. I wasn't getting booked by promoters. So it eventually led for me to do my own event, you know, mm. and, and I'll expedite it. You know, the first event I did was probably the worst door deal that I had ever done, but I started doing all age events. And I took a door deal. And the very first time I took a door deal, I bet on myself. Yeah. Which is the story I told on the podcast with um, with um, Boss Talk, where I talk about how I turned a, you know, $120 investment and I turned it into $3,000. And I started seeing a lot of success flipping. And they gave me this the, the, the worst deal of all time, but I bet on myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I started noticing that by way of me knowing social media marketing, I started having a high, a high success rate with you know, live events. Mm. I learned the trait from about 2006 to 2010. Okay. My daughter was born. My son, So my mom passes away. My daughter's born. My son's born back to back. I go get a retail job. I, I don't take a full break. I start, you know, working with other artists. I start doing other things. And I just go, you know what? Like, I owe it to my family to set them up. You know, let me work. Let me set them up. And I took a break away from it in terms of full time. But I was always daydreaming about it. Yeah. So by the time I get to 2015, I'm like, you know what, man? Like, I can't take this no more. I got I to I I get back to it. I got to, you know, this is speaking to me every day. I'm, I'm coming in. I'm not enjoying this anymore. Like, I needed to know I can have success in another world. And I did. But let me go back to this world. And so I started doing a little bit of content promotion. And by the time I got to 2016, I said, I'm launching my company. I'm leaving my job. I quit my job with $200 in my bank account in Jan- on January 30th. Uh, yeah, January 30th of 2016. And I did my very first event under my company, Premier Live Experience, on February 12th of 2016 with none other than Scarface, wow. right? Sold it out to 700 tickets. And by the end of February, I had $30,000 in my bank account. There you go. And that's that how it. you do it. That's a hell of a story. This hell of a story. Yeah, and, and I mean, I went back to back and I just never stopped after that. I think by the end of 2016, I had to work with, you know, everybody that I looked up to. Because, you know, my first instinct was I'm a fan. Yes. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to treat these guys with the respect that I want to give them. Go. Right. And so I would book these guys. And when they would arrive to the city, you know, as soon as I picked them up or as soon as I saw them, I would hand them their back end. Right, mm-hmm. and they would come up to me like, "Yo, Already? what the fuck are you yeah. doing? Yeah, because this is boring." Yeah, because C-O-D. I'm gonna be honest, yeah. you, you know now, you've heard the rumors now. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. But when, when you were green, doing that is like, <laughs> let me tell you, you won everybody over just by doing that, just by treating them nice, <laughs> just by being on time, yeah. just by not being a janky. Mm-hmm. Concert promoter. Oh, and that was a stigma for so long. I used to hate you hearing the term promoter. It shit made me want to take a shower. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, Yo, man, that's an ugly word. You know what I mean? Concert promoters can be like have a bad stigmatism like a lawyer or a car sales. Yeah. You know, yeah. oh man, they're gonna try to keep the back end. Yeah. Oh man, they're gonna put us in this bullshit hotel. Oh man, the sound system ain't right. You know, everything. No, and, and and I and I prided myself, but I think my first, I guess the first order of business was you know, let me go uh, book everybody I look up to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, work with everybody that I that I genuinely fuck with, mm-hmm. and then at the same time as I'm working with those guys, you know, and build relationships with those guys because, you know, some of those guys that are now considered quote unquote legacy acts, like the new wave promoters, were they weren't as interested. They wanted the new young guys. Mm. So the the older cats that were you know from the East Coast or from the West Coast. They weren't really being looked at in the South. So it gave me a wide open lane to go, you know what? Y'all yeah. don't want these guys. I'll fuck with them. Wow. And at the same time, as I'm developing those relationships and working those guys through the circuit, you know, and I'm not just doing Dallas Fort Worth. I'm doing Houston, Austin, San Antonio. Wow. And working them all across Texas. I'm also establishing relationships with new cats because some of these guys are tied in. Right. Mm. And so, you know, there was challenges that I put on myself early on. Like, yo, I got to find somebody that I can break. Yeah. And I was very fortunate to have, uh, you know, I have a really close friendship with a renaissance of immortal soldiers who immortal soldiers in their own right you know very 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 uh legendary group you know from fort worth uh you know he put me on to joiner lucas he said man there's this guy that you need to take a look at his name is joiner lucas you know um dude i think you need to catch the wave before it takes off i have a feeling this guy's gonna blow up i was so like man i need i need that for my resume i need to get the guy that (laughs) 
nobody like nobody saw coming. I could say I caught him before he caught he, yes, he yes, went yes. in. So I reach out, find his contact, get a hold of joiners and, and his manager. I end up um booking him when he had maybe 20, 25,000 followers on Instagram. You know, I, I, I heard enough music to know like, yeah, this guy is he's he's one of those. Yeah. Uh, I want to get in and I booked them, put them in Fort Worth in 2016, made the show free because I just wanted to promote him, have this guy on my resume. And uh, we we did the show and here we are, you know, six, seven years later, I still have a relationship with him. The guy's one of the most successful artists in the U.S., you know, in terms yes. of independent. And, you know, and since then, those guys have allowed me to continue to work with every tour they've done as a result of the money that I spent with them in 2016, yes. as a result of me believing in them when nobody else believed in them and me taking a chance on them. Mm -hmm. But I needed that. But in 2018, I did their tour. I, they just did a tour in, uh, this last year. I did their tour, you know, in Texas. And I, I mean, like I'm close to these guys. Yeah. And that just, to me, was a big deal to have that artist on my resume yeah. and not say well hey i can only i can only promote bun b i can only promote scarface yes. i can only promote eric b and rakim now you got them all you know i'm like no i can also do nipsey hustle Davey, state boogie west side boogie you know yeah. all these yeah. guys you know like i needed to have that for yeah. me so there's a saying it's called blow a bag to get a bag <laughs> yeah and that's what you did well, yeah, I mean, I also look at it like for me, I, I don't think people understand. Like I, I have, I call it music psychology, mm -hmm. but I have a really good music. Well, I have a great music mind in my opinion that I don't think people fully comprehend. Yeah. So I'm also having a forecast in addition to looking at like, okay, well, you know, the, when you forecast what's next, sometimes you introduce that. And when you introduce that, it's new. So when yeah. it's new, it's not received with the same like the same familiarity as maybe something that is already known. So yeah, yeah. me bringing face and bond, that's too easy coming in, in Texas. It's oh yeah, it's right down yeah. the street. Yeah, that's <laughs> easy, but it's easy to, to to put that out to the public because the public knows that here. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. They don't know some of those guys. So if I'm having success with those guys that nobody knows, right. then what's the common what's the commonality? What's the common thread in that? It's me. So yeah, yeah. that that increases my value. You yeah, know, very much so. And then now in the process, I'm establishing working relationships with these guys, and because they're going through the the rounds and they're going through the circuit and they're seeing all the bad promoters, they remember the good ones. They always yeah. remember the good ones. <laughs> That's what I was going to go with that. You mm -hmm. always remember the good ones. Now, I watched you, I believe it was on Boss Talk. Shout out to my man, ECEO, who yeah, used to make a little Boss Talk. Um, you did something that I've only seen done once. And what these guys did, shout out to the Rally Boys, just know, you know, Rally D, Cotton. What they did was, back in the 90s, they would throw concerts mm -hmm. and bring the big people, gotcha. right? And while they had them in town, they recorded with them. <laughs> Sound like you. Man. Sound like you bringing them to town for concerts and while you got the relationship built with them, turn on these cameras. Yeah. Let's talk about your podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about your podcast because I heard how, I heard a story how that was pissing you off Something pissed you off and it snapped in your head. I need to do it this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's I mean, cool. I, I love telling that story because it's an important one, right? And, you know, it's part of the journey, uh, you know, and I could go real deep and give you like the long plan, but I'm going to give you the short condensed version, which is, you know, I was booking shows 2015, 2016, 2017. That time frame in specific was very, you know, it was the beginning of Premier Live Experience, which is the company. I'm booking all these artists and media is reaching out to me. And they're grabbing every, they're grabbing the interviews and me because I want to build a relationship. I'm giving 97.9 the, the interview. I'm giving K104 the interview. Mm -hmm. I'm giving the Dallas Observer whoever's asking for the interview. I'm giving it to them. I started noticing 97.9. You know they were filming the interviews. They were posting them on social media, but they wouldn't mention my company because they're like, well, you're not running advertisements with us. Mm. And I'm looking at these interviews and I'm like, dude, I just bought the game or I just brought one B to you and I'm paying them 10 grand or 20 grand. Like, to me, that's a 20 grand interview. Yeah, that's 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 running an ad with you. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that, that's a lot of equity that I'm giving you. And the least you could do is just shout me out, man. But the fact that you're not willing to do that after a while, I'm like, I'm playing myself. So I was like, I want to start my own platform to, you know, market and promote my own shows. Mm hmm you know, with the artist that I'm booking. And I went through different variations of that before I got to what ultimately became my stuff, right? Now, fast forward to today, uh, I say, you know, like whenever you go to a casino, you know how you hit a jackpot slot, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have, it's like, you, you, 
And then yeah. I was like, seven, 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 right? Mm-hmm. Well, to me, to hit all four, it's like, okay, get the show, profit off the show, mm-hmm. you know, get an interview and get a feature. Yeah, if, I can, if I can run the table, which has happened, yeah, yeah. it just doesn't happen all the time, uh, then I hit the jackpot. You know, I have an artist that I manage, so I work the features through her or through other guys that I might fuck with. And then, you know, if I get the interview, you know, even better. And then if the show happens, great. And then if the show's profitable, even greater. Wow, yeah. Uh, does it always happen that way? No, 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 no. no but no. yeah, that is part of the strategy for me because, you know, money motivates. You know, at the end yeah. of the day, money's one of the easiest way to break guys and create a relationship. Come on now. <laughs> you know what I mean? That but I'm also, Blow a bag to get a bag. But I'm going <laughs> to tell you also, man, something I always tell people. If you spend money the right way with people, you never have to spend it again. Say that. You know, say that again. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes, say that again. sometimes the money is just to gain the access. You know, and then you got to build a relationship from there. You know, I have a great relationship with Royce the Five Nine. I spent money with him in two thousand and six, two thousand and seven, and you know, I was just at his uh, studio over the weekend. I was teaching a social media class. He let me drive his Mercedes Benz across town. He let me stay at the studio, like you know, just family now. Already family, and and I, you know, I can't say good. Enough. What's up, Royce? Yeah, I mean, I can't say enough good things about. Hey. So, with him, you know, like he's a, he's a hell of a mentor and a hell of a friend. Hell of a MC. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those are the a hell of a MC. Yeah. You know, one of the greats, and Come that's on. what I'm saying. Like, but spend money with him once. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, I still yeah. spend it. Like, if we do a show, of course. Oh, for sure, you break bread. Yeah, yeah. You know, but that's where I'm at too today. Like, you know, as a promoter, like it's not to say that I don't ever want to do shows like I was doing then, but. Now, I, I'm more interested in spending money with the guys that look out for me. Like, oh, really? I want to work with, the, like, if Joyner, Royce, Joe Bunn, and any of those guys do a show today, or if they need me, I'm doing it without without hesitation. Yeah, yeah. Like, say less. They would rather you do it <laughs> than deal with the janky. Yep. You, know, you know what, what I'm I saying? And I'd rather do it than let them allow them yeah, to do it. Yeah, you don't want them to go down that road, you know, yeah. especially at the age that we are now. Yeah. We can deal with them janky promoters in our 20s, man. Yeah. <laughs> We've learned to build those relationships and that's our guy. Yeah. That's my guy in Fort Worth. That's my guy in Dallas. That's my guy in Mississippi. That's my guy, you know, that type of thing. Yeah, for and sure. So, and then when you get a new concert promoter, anxiety goes up. <laughs> I, mean, that's why, I, I mean, also to me, it's like I'm invested. Yes. I'm invested in their success and, and I don't ever want to. And they see that too, brother. Yeah, and, I, and I never want to limit it to just like the concerts. Like I'm, if, you know, if I'm given the opportunity to build their brand or help them with social media, mm-hmm. I do it. I do it because it also challenges me because, you know, when I talk about the music mind and the music psychology, I, I you know, we talk about, you know, what the ultimate goals are, right? You know, yep. like, what do I want to be viewed as? Like, I don't want to be viewed as just a promoter. I want to be viewed as an executive. I want to be looked at as an A&R, as a project manager, someone that can identify talent and someone that can enhance someone's situation, mm-hmm. right? And I think there's so many different ways to do that. You know, there's so mm-hmm. many different ways to enhance mm-hmm people's careers you know and I'd be and, an asset that's what you yeah, yeah. And, now yeah. now you know something you and i spoke about through all of your accolades achievements we're going to talk about how you are underutilized in this city mm, yeah that's a hell of a one right there ain't it? yeah i mean because look i mean you look at it from if you look at the smooth vega career on paper right people could discredit you know certain you know accolades based off of well you know that's just the four with weekly right mm-hmm. the four with weekly you know i won the best rap artist award in 2006 2007 2015 so that's three awards there i was inducted into the fort with music hall of fame by way of the fort with weekly in 2019 mm. right i'm at this at this point i'm only 34 years old i'm like don't know jimmy yet i'm still in my i'm still i'm still in my prime i'm still i'm still running you yeah, know? yeah you know don't don't do that to me yet you know but they did you know and um all that to say, you know, as a promoter, been nominated, you know, I've had all these cool things happen, you know, where I've been recognized even last year for the Cosign Awards. They nominated me for Entrepreneur of the Year. Mm. And being able to get that recognition does mean a lot. But at the same time, you know, I just shared a story on my Facebook. So me and Bobo spoke on the phone Monday. I'm in L.A. on Monday, right? I'm having a meeting with D-Smoke. And after the meeting with D-Smoke, I'm on my way to Power 106 and K-Day. And... You know, over there, you know, the main personality who's a 19-year-old, a 19-year radio vet, my bad, Mm -hmm. a 19-year radio vet, super respected, you know, well-known out there, reached out to me and said that she wanted to have a meeting with me Mm. and the assistant program director. So my thought immediately was like, they want to give me a show. Why else are they going to fucking have me a show? That's where I would go to. So I went and we had a meeting and, you know, first and foremost, 
great people. Mm -hmm. Showed so much respect, so much like, like they knew my shit, they knew yep. my content, and they essentially offered a form of a partnership and a relationship where they want to start featuring my content on the on the morning show as well as you know have me start coming and doing some kind of correspondent work borderline bring my podcast set up out there so and cool. and I was so moved by it but the moment I get in the car tell, tell them about it this is what happened so I get in reality the car, yeah it, it just like slapped me in the face and I just shut down and I couldn't talk and then I was the reason why I couldn't talk is cuz I couldn't process that here I am in the second largest market in the United States in LA, right? New York being number one, LA being number two, right? You talk about K8, Power 106. Big stations. You know, this is second only maybe Hot 97, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 you're right. These people are recognizing me, but Dallas Fort Worth, K104, 97.9, and all the radio stations just have never extended the arm. Never will. What is it? Yeah, and, and I, but it, but I was I'm not even mad at 97 or 104 because of it. I just could not register how I'm over here yes. and how they're telling like. And you and they on backyard. Yeah, I'm like yo, they're rolling out the red carpet for me, and here I am under your nose producing top notch. Whether it's content, Wonder. whether it's concerts, whether it's ha having a hand or my my DNA in so many different situations. Like, yeah. how are y'all not recognizing? recognizing it is and then i started really thinking about it on the way back to the airport like is it because i'm not loud enough is it because i'm not because i mean you know i know how to be a self-promoter i am a self-promoter yeah. mm -hmm. but to that degree do i have to be even more do i have to be louder do i have to turn up the volume do what do, do i have to resort to antics you know no, I, no. you I'm have not gonna, to get recognized somewhere else yeah. and, <laughs> why is maybe that? maybe they i don't know i just thought about just sitting here while you're speaking yeah. Maybe you are one of those type of people who can't be controlled. You're probably right. You know, one thing that I always tell people. Not saying that my people, because I got friends that work there. Not saying that y'all could be controlled, but in our situation, I'm going to let you go back to your story. We had radio, we had a radio show. Mm. And everybody in Dallas knew it was this. Okay. You know what I mean? And they knew I retired. And everybody was like, surely. Not even that I wanted to go, mm -hmm. but surely K104 and 97.9 is going to reach out to Bobo and get him a show. And I never really wanted it. I did start wanting it after a while, but at that time I didn't. But you have to sit back and think. It's in the same scenario that you're speaking that you got to wonder why. Wonder why. I'm going to tell you what I think it may be, which, I mean, now that, you know, we talked and I always feel like the, the thing that comes to mind is that you're right. I think independence intimidates, right? And I always use the analogy of me and you go to a gas station and we're two single men and we see a woman that's just fine as hell mm -hmm. and she's driving a Mercedes Benz and dressed in, you know, you know, top notch, you know, Louis Vuitton or whatever. Like we might look at her. She might be the most beautiful woman in the world, but we're probably like, man, there's no way we got a chance. You know, we're driving a little Toyota. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. driving a Mercedes Benz, not knowing she might be the most lonely woman and all she wants is company and don't give a damn about all that superficial shit we're, shoot your shot. yeah we're too intimidated to even approach it i feel sometimes when people see that yeah you know they get intimidated by the, the idea of someone being independent and yeah, yeah. you know i'm not gonna lie to you over the last few days you know i've resorted to like some like just like antics to kind of see if people bite the bait mm -hmm. i started calling out rainwater believe it or not yeah and shout out my brother yeah, rainwater, rainwater. <laughs> yeah, we I, talked about that yeah, huh? we talked about that rainwater <laughs> Right. What's up, brother? Let me clarify something about that. Just for the record, I don't dislike the guy at all. I don't even know the guy. But it was, you know, I was doing it for sport, but I was also doing it to see how uh, people respond and react to content. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to my to my point, which is, you know, when you rattle the cage, you're the loud guy. You know what that is. That's, that's what it is, bro. And I did it. And as a result, the followers went up. And I'm like, man, y'all are so... Are so they like, messy. They like the negative stuff, bro. And it's so interesting to me because it's like, I'm doing it to fuck with y'all. Y'all don't even realize I'm working you. I'm trolling you. Yes. You know, social media to me is Pinocchio. We are Geppetto. We could we mm. pull strings, you know? Yes. But it's amazing on that note. How you could post something, like you just showed me a TikTok. You remember you showed me yeah, the yeah. one that was real positive? Yeah. It's amazing that on your that platform, it's not amazing, but it's good. That you have as many, I don't know what it's called, clicks, likes, or whatever yeah, on views, views or whatever. on views on that one. 
because I noticed that when you tend to post something positive, you don't get many. But as soon as you put up, oh man, this is the time PMC got into it with sudden such. Yeah. Boy, it's going through the roof. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They want to hear about the drama. And I feel like sometimes we, but you know, as creatives, as you know, people in general, we we have the ability to control our narrative. But the, but but be honest though, because I'm thinking, my mind is always rolling. Think about when you was a kid. Yeah. You want to go to a movie? You gonna go see a love story? Never. Yes. You gonna go? No, though. I went to see the Titanic. Well. Woo! You also want to go see Menace, Boys in the Hood. Yeah. You also want to go see the scary movie. You yeah. always want to go see the All action love. movies. You want to see the one All with the, the bad guy. You know, the action maybe movies. that's what Super it is. Yeah. Maybe that's what it I is. I mean, in the, you know, mm-hmm. it's a form of entertainment, man. That's why I don't take a lot of these guys that are on the internet too serious because yeah. I know they're all characters and the internet as a whole is an alternate reality to begin with, right? Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it does consume a lot of people's, like, the you know, way the way they digest things and the way mm-hmm. they, they try to approach things and they start second guessing whether or not they're doing enough because they're watching what everybody else is doing. Exactly. But it's a sport to me, you know. So you know, at the end of the day, you know, of course, I want to be the best at what I do. I feel I'm the best at what to. I do. Mm-hmm. So if I, you know, I've never really been the type of guy that wants to challenge someone one on one. Yeah, hey, I got a basketball. I see the hoop right there. Let's go play a game of twenty one. Uh, and you know, I feel you know with the podcast coming now and me kind of like going into more of an open format and share my perspectives and my opinions and my experiences i'm a little bit more you know prepared to take on that role because for a long time and i've said this you know i feel like i may have had a form of imposter syndrome where i didn't necessarily see myself the way the world saw me right i didn't necessarily people already felt like i was massively successful yeah, mm-hmm. but i'm like i'm not successful successful yeah, enough yeah. like you know oh man you're doing great i'm like you know where you be. yeah mm-hmm. I, i'm like shit i'm 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 halfway there you know yeah, i'm 20 yeah. 20 Plus in, you know, like, but, you know, to be able to do some of the things that I've been able to do, especially over the last year, you know, whether it's going to Power 106, whether it's going to the Rock Nation office in New York, whether it's, you know, touring across the country and being able to put on big plays and big shows and work with a lot of major artists. Like, those are things that are very validating and lets me know, like, you know, you're right on Mm -hmm. the right path. Yeah. But it comes at a cost, man. It comes at a cost. You well, know? know. You know, time. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. You got time. You know, right. I got three kids. You know, my kids are babies, but. How old are your babies? Uh, so my oldest is about to be 13. Mm-hmm. Uh, my second is about to be 12. And my third is about to be nine. But they're oh. all back to back, you know. And oh. I got two girls, so they count as two boys, you know, two boys a piece. So that's like five <laughs> kids. You know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You, you, got you got four girls. girls so bro. you got eight. Yeah. <laughs> and they are handfuls. You got eight. You know yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they run shit, you know. Yeah. You can do and then you leave them, and you, you miss them. Yeah. You miss them, and they need their daddy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They run shit for y'all. Yeah, no, my the oldest. Girls do, my right. my <laughs> oldest, my oldest has gotten to an age where, like, you know, sh- nothing I do is cool for one. <laughs> but I'm at an age, you know, I'm also at a point where, like, I she's starting to develop her own thought process and her own, you know, her own way of thinking. So, you know, I think probably a few weeks ago she hit me with the word misogynistic. She's like you're misogynistic. Yeah. Yeah. What's that other word that you said? Ready? Offensive. <laughs> That's offensive. That's offensive. <laughs> yeah. So when you start hearing those words, I'm like, all right, I gotta check myself, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. Uh, but you know, th- that's that's kind of where where my mind's at now. You know, and yeah. you know, missing birthdays and mm. missing occasions like those things aren't easy mm-hmm. things to do. That's tough, know? bro. Yeah, it's hard. So we went um, to California, mm-hmm. had a great meeting, Power One Hundred Six. K Day, K Day. We did the beautiful podcast. You have an excellent, excellent Thanks, podcast, bro. Absolutely. We've, we, we've mastered concert promotions. What's the next move for Mr. Smooth Vega? I mean, I think the extension of the podcast is going to be, you know, that's going to be a big part of it because, you know, in terms of content, you know, and I, this is something I was talking to you about on the phone earlier. I'm like, look, man, there's a difference between, you know, social media management content creation and content strategy you are already doing the most important piece of it which is creating content it's a, now it's a matter of strategizing the content for me part of the initiative in 2023 and beyond is getting consistent and in, in increasing the frequency of the content that i create yeah. so you know we're looking at you know this podcast as a way to propel my personal brand and as a result anything attached to my personal brand where that's the artist i manage or the the endeavors that i eventually plan to get into mm-hmm. i think the goal has always been to be a record executive, I, I think there was a period of time. I don't, I don't necessarily know that I wanted to 
run a label. Mm -hmm. But the way that I look at the way I've been operating with the artists that I do work with specifically, Might as well. the artists that I manage, I'm, I'm really am a label, you know, I'm mm -hmm. acting as an, an a and as a project manager. I'm stepping in. I'm still very involved with the music creation process. Yeah. If, if all else, at very least on the post-production side, but you know, I'm calling in favors left and right. I manage an artist by the name of XB Valentine. She's a really dope artist. Oh, really? Shout and, out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, you know, I've, I've, you know, I pulled in some favors for her, man. Hip hop, and yeah, hip. But she does, she does like R and B, hip hop. You know, but okay. she, she's a, she can rap, but she's really, really unique in the sense that, like, okay. she's kind of a, 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 an old soul new artist, but she still very much does the new, yeah. the new style of music. Mm -hmm. But you know, we're about to wrap up her album. It's coming out in May. Is she interviewing? Uh, yeah, she's interviewing. I, I would love to bring her out here before the album drops. The album's dropping in May. Uh, but you know, we have. Bone Thugs and Harmony on the album. We have Ooh, Westside Boogie. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. We have Royce on the album. And we have D Smoke on the album. Yeah. And to me, to be able to do that independently uh, and to be able to call in my favorites with these guys that I've established relationships major. with, yeah. you know, I, I want to present her and package her to the best of my abilities as a major independent, you know? There you go. And I feel that that's going to, you know, and that's how I ended up in the Rock Nation office to begin with in, in June of last year was because of, you know, me working with her and people's noticing and, and, and identifying that we're doing a good job with her. But it's time to take it a step further. And, it, you know, it wouldn't mean nothing more than to be able to continue to change your life, elevate her and put her in a position to where she's at very least a profitable yeah. recording artist, you know, because there's, a you know, success, success, as you guys know. It's very subjective, you know. It is. We just yeah. got to talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> if it were. Right? Yeah. So I think, yeah. you know, I think the main goal is to be able to turn a profit with these guys and, make, yeah. you know, make sure that they're in a good position. But the goal is eventually to continue to, you know, work on being viewed and doing my part to be that music executive. There you go. I wish you all the success, bro. Yeah. No, nah, I mean, I appreciate I mean, you. Got, you got what it takes. Like I said, we, you and I spoke. I think people need to reach out to you. Mm -hmm. You know, part of tap into your your knowledge. You know, what I'm saying, I mean, we got a we got a resource right here in the Metroplex that's that's very underutilized. Speaking of, how do people reach out to you? So they can reach out. You know, I mean, look at this point, I don't mind giving out my phone number. It's eight one seven nine six two seven two zero zero. But you can reach out Instagram, Facebook, Smooth Vega across the board, and and I appreciate that because I think you know. When we talk about the word underutilized, what I really, why I say that is because, you know, and, and I've never been the guy to be like overly loud and do the whole like, look at me. I am I'm a self-promoter. I'm, I'm, I'm a self-promoter. But when it comes down to it, when it comes down to what I do, I do believe I'm the best at what I do. And there I don't feel that there's anybody better at what I do or period. Like, I feel like I could play various roles. Like I act as a graph. I'm a graphic designer, a web designer, there you go. social media manager. Speak on it. I act as an agent. I broker deals for not only local, independent, and also national talent. In addition to that, I manage and I promote. And and I could still get busy and produce and create and write music at any given time. And you teach a class. And I just started class for that. And, you know, being able to, you know, year round, I'm speaking at schools. You know, I'm doing career days at elementary schools, at middle schools and high schools throughout mm -hmm. the city. You know, I'm um, doing my best to be an ambassador for the city. You know, I even, you know, last year got an opportunity to speak to over 200 students at TCU for a marketing mm. course you're talking about a guy that graduated from high school homeschool right did not never went to college you know at one point i had a teacher tell me why are you even here you're wasting your time because i was getting in trouble so much but yet i'm the one talking to universities you know yeah. and uh you know and i think it's important for people to understand when i say that underutilized thing is because i'm not you know what a lot of these guys man they love to hear themselves talk Come on, you know they they, they do interviews and they all they want to do is sell you on all the they use yes. car salesmen right yeah. like mm -hmm. look at me I'm the car that's shiny mm -hmm. if you drive yeah, me yeah. I'll take you here right oh yeah I mean like I always believe that you know the results are always going to speak louder than words right there you go and so if people do their research and their due diligence God willing they'll be able to see all the work that I've been able to do and there's no way to really mm -hmm. like consolidate it or, or like break it down in one sitting like there's I, I have a long enough career now to where you have to go through different variations of like mm. well this is him as the rapper mm -hmm. this is him as the promoter this is him as the manager this is him as the social media manager this is him as the broker and you know the fact that i've had my hand in so many different situations over the years yep. including the podcast for space which is still even though i've been doing it now for a while still relatively new mm -hmm. and uh, i but appreciate you're a veteran in it you're a veteran in it because you know 
Well, I mean, I want to I want to tell people's story the right way. I feel that you're doing it the right way, and it's not all about you know, hey, you know what? Let's get the let's get a reaction out of everybody. Nah, right. click. No. We we need to tell the stories the right way and educate the next generation because it's so important that we do that and we assume that role because nobody is trying to teach these kids how to be better. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. That's one. And, that's hey, that's look, one of our goals. At the end of the day, when it's all said and done, I'm no longer here. You know, it's not just within music; it's within the world. I just want to leave it better than I found it. That's it. That's hey, the way man. life is, bro. You got some shout outs? Man, I want to shout out to Bobo Luciano, man, Super hey. Tight TV. You know, and you guys have been no, nothing but great. You know, a shout out to everybody that's been supporting. Obviously, XP Valentine, we got a project coming out in May. Yes. That's the artist that I manage. And, you know, shout out to everybody that I work with. I know Rakim Al Jabbar is a mutual. Yes, sir. What's up, Rakim? <laughs> What's up, nephew? Man, you know, I always say he sounds like Shaquille O'Neal. So next time we hear him talking, like, yeah. 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 <laughs> I sound like Shaquille. Yeah. Rock him out your boy. Rock him out your boy. <laughs> uh, that's my guy, man. Just salute to all the creators out there that are trying to do what they do. You know, I'm, I'm here, man. You know, at the end of the day, uh, I went through a lot of the experiences that I went through. So some of the guys don't have to. And of course, people are still going to go through what they're going to go through. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, don't complicate your journey, guys. Like, you know, if you don't know how to fix a car, don't try to fix it. Come on, man. Go to the mechanic. Stay in your yeah. lane. Well, you know, you don't want to get overran by <laughs> mediocreness anyway. Yeah. Only the serious people. Serious inquiries only. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all reach out to the man. Yeah. He's got a plethora of information that he... I ain't gonna say he's gonna give it to you. Yeah. You know, game is to be sold, not told. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and that's the way it is. But um, I appreciate you coming out, bro. No, nah, man, I appreciate you giving me the time and the platform and anytime, man. I'm here. I read it, man. I got my man Smooth Vega in the house. You a real super tight guest, baby. No, I'm gonna get some game tuned in with super tight. Yeah. I get the low love from Big Bobo from the front seat, not no photos. 